Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition of Bible Track Echoes. I hope your week has been going very, very well. I hope your walk with Christ is going strong and you're being faithful to him and finding his word faithful to you and you're finding opportunities to communicate the love of Christ to others. Well, right now my Bible sits open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. If you can, reach over, get your own copy of God's word and join me there, 2 Peter chapter 1. We're finishing up our look at this chapter today. I'll begin to read at verse 19 here in a moment. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. And with that pen and paper handy, uh, you can not only take notes, but have the ability to jot down our contact information that will be given. Because as I say every day, I have a free gift to give to you. That free gift is a sample packet of gospel tracts. I want to talk about one of the tracts here in just a moment, but let me lead into our study this way. The question before us today is a foundational question. It is this, where did the Bible come from? Or I could put it this way, how did we get the Bible? Now, these questions have been hotly debated in every generation, and in every generation, not everybody has agreed. Some have always said that the Bible is a book of divine origin. It's from God. Others say it's a human book, but God helped the human beings to write it, but it is a human book. And still others say the Bible is purely a work of man. God, these folks say, had nothing at all to do with the production of the Bible. Today, I'm going to be using the word revelation. Revelation. Now, when I do, I am not referring to the last book of the Bible. The last book is called the book of the Revelation because it reveals something. It reveals the future. Today, though, when I'm using the word revelation, I'm using it to refer to the Bible. You see, the Bible is the revealed word of God. Today's verses talk about the method God used to take the truth in that was in his heart and mind and transmit that truth to you and me. If you and I get this issue wrong, then virtually everything else we're going to hold to on spiritual matters is going to be wrong. This is foundational. Get your Bible and join me. Second Peter, please, in chapter 1. I mentioned the sample packet of gospel tracts a moment ago. Now, a tract is is a gospel tool, an evangelism tool. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And the particular gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled The Gift. The gift, because salvation is a gift. The front face of this track is just gorgeous. There's a beautiful wrapped gift on the picture here, and it says just simply, the gift. This is simply written, clear to the point, It based upon this truth, that salvation is not something you and I earn or merit or work up to or find out later on. It's something we received as a gift from God given to us, purchased by the person of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again. Oh, friend, salvation is free to us. It cost Jesus his life, but it's free to us. He offers it to us, to all, as a gift. We need to be offering salvation, God's salvation, to lost people, but offer it correctly as a gift. That's what this gospel track does. This is the power of this track. It's in its simplicity. Please let me send it to you. At the end of the program, my announcer will give three different ways by which you can give to us your name 
name and address. Do that. It will send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, The Gift. Do that today. You can just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open, begin looking here. 2 Peter 1, verse 19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that ends the chapter. I've been using three words, all beginning with the letter R, like in the word rock, to form my outline for verses 19, 20, and 21. The three words, well, the first two I've already used are these. Number one, reliability. Our Bible is reliable based upon verse 19. Word number two is the word role, R-O-L-E, still based upon verse 19. What role is the Bible to play in my life? Our word for today, as I already said, is the word revelation. I'm looking at verses 20 and 21. How did God get his word to us. How did he reveal his word to us? Now, that's my focus. Now, here are some basic facts. You ought to jot these down. If you're relatively new to being a believer in Christ, five facts about your Bible you ought to know. Fact number one is this. The Bible consists of 66 separate individual books. No more, no less. 66. But it's all one book. Fact number two, the Bible was written over a period of over 1,600 years, and God used more than 40 different human writers. Now, often we call these writers penmen, that's P-E-N-M-A-N, penmen, because they only penned what God gave. Fact number three, the Bible communicates many truths, but it has only one main message. That main message is this, how to be right with him. Fact number four, the Bible is a book in harmony with itself. It doesn't, it doesn't contradict itself. It's in harmony with itself. And the fifth fact is this. Please note this. Write down the number, 3,808. Did you write it down? 3,808. That's how many times just in the Old Testament you're going to find the phrase, the Lord said or the word of the Lord came. I say that because the Bible claims to be the word of the Lord. Either the Bible is truthful or it lies to us. If it's lying to us, don't believe any of it. But if it's the word of the Lord, we better believe all of it. I want to focus for right now on verse 20. Let me borrow uh, the word first here that's in this verse. When verse 20 says, knowing this first, that word first means above all, or it means first in importance. The first thing we need to get. When we answer the question, how did we get our Bible? The first or most important fact we need to know is this. No scripture, verse 20 says, is of private interpretation. Now, some, when they read that private interpretation, think that it means that no individual believer has the right to interpret the Bible on their own. But that's not at all true. Beloved, if you're a believer in Christ, you have been saved by the blood of Christ and you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to teach you the Scripture. You can read the Bible, understand the Bible, and interpret the Bible. The phrase, the private interpretation here in verse 20, refers to the formation of the Bible. And what it means is that none of the penmen of the various Bible portions put down their own ideas. The Bible does not record the solutions or the ideas about men that spoke on the issues to which they spoke. In short, men did not invent the Bible. Verse 21 bolsters this whole idea when it begins with these words, for or because the prophecy, speaking about the Bible, the prophecy, the Bible came not in old time by the will of man. That's pretty clear, isn't it? 
The word came means uh, its origin, how the Bible got to us. This book we call the Bible was not guided into existence, was not carried into existence and brought to us by the will or the choice of the penman. Verse 21 goes on to tell us how the Bible was formed. Our first fact, based upon verse 19, is that the Bible is not the work of man. But now we move from the first fact to a foundational fact. How was the Bible formatted? How, what's the foundation of it? Verse 21 says that the Holy Spirit moved on holy men to write. The Holy Spirit moved men to speak and to write what God wanted. That word moved is the word that was used of a sailboat being moved along by the wind. The power to move the boat was not in the boat. It was in the wind. And actually, the Greek word translated moved here is the Greek word from which we get our English word ferry, F-E-R-R-Y. You know what a ferry boat or a barge does. It carries cargo or people, stuff from one side of the river to another. The barge or the ferry is the controlling force that gets the job done. Well, the Holy Spirit controlled the holy men and used them to give us his word. The word of God came to us through holy men, but the Spirit of God moved them. The word God uses to describe all of this is the word inspiration. It means God breathed. In 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Notice it does not say the writers are inspired, but the Scriptures, the Bible is inspired of God. That means that the words in Scripture are God breathed. Your breath comes out from your person, so too our Bible came out of God's person. All of it did. Every single part of it did in its entirety and its individual words. All are inspired or God breathed. Now here in 2 Peter 1, we see the way God took his breathed out words and delivered them to mankind. This truth becomes so critical in light of the first line of chapter 2 of 2 Peter, which says, but there were false prophets among the people. Well, there's always been false religious teachers, and there always will be. So how do God's people know whose voice to listen to? Answer, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Okay, where do we find Jesus' voice? We find it in the reliable Word of God. Each day we put our minds and hearts into letting the Bible do its role and lighten our hearts. The Bible will do all this when we know, first of all, Jesus as our Savior and we are indwelt by the Spirit of God. And then secondly, God will do this through His Word as we actively participate in letting the Bible speak to us as we read it, meditate on it, memorize it. So what, dear friend, are you and I going to do with our Bible? Not on Sunday, but what are we going to do with our Bible today? Dear friend, if you don't read the Bible, you're not hearing God's voice, and you and I are in desperate need of the voice of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him 